this. I um, It's so funny because uh, I haven't been able to cook out here. It's been windy, it's been a little too warm, just a little bit of everything. So welcome to Margaret's Kitchen, Comidas de Mi Familia, Tu Sangre Es Tu Sangre, my authentic New Mexico cookbook. Um, you know, I um, I've been, I always watch a lot of different things on, on, on Facebook, and uh, it's all about making tortillas lately. Everybody wants to know how to make tortillas. Well, so I decided that I, I do have a channel. I do already have one on my YouTube page. Uh, my YouTube channel is Margaret's Kitchen NM, and you, you will find a tortilla recipe in there. But today I'm gonna, I'm gonna redo the recipe, and I'm gonna, not redo it, but I'm just gonna redo the video because I just want you to see. I already put in here my salt, my baking powder, and my flour. So um, I put, this is only like six cups of flour and stuff, a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of baking powder. And so anyways, and I have two cups of hot water and I have my hot water container here. So what I did is I put a quart of four tablespoons of, of uh, shortening, Crisco shortening, and I emulsify the shortening into the hot water so it could just melt. I find it to be, I don't know, it makes your tortillas a little bit softer and it's just really nice. So anyway, so that's what we're going to do today. And so stay tuned. I'm going to get my, um, my paper towels because I'm always using lots of paper towels and stuff. So anyways, um, so we're going to get started. I'm going to just do a little, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my, on my, um, on my griddle here and it's more because I haven't I haven't used it in a few days so well it's been a little bit that I haven't used it so what I do is I'm just getting my my little towel and I'm going to put some oil on my towel this just this is just my actually avocado oil and I'm just going to wipe it and you can tell how hot this is so cooking in an outdoor kitchen is see if my my comal is really clean so i keep it pretty clean so anyways um so anyways um so i like to clean it just kind of to the point that um i'm gonna turn that down just a little bit cooking in an outdoor kitchen is different because of the fact is that um it seems like it gets hotter your stove out here gets a little bit hotter and then um on top of all that um I don't know it's just I find it to be really different so anyways let's get started I want to I was gonna make some chili and stuff but um, we need to Jesse has an appointment that they just made for him so we got to get ourselves to the appointment but he's getting ready so while he's getting ready I'm gonna make the tortillas so anyway so I get I'm mixing around the salt and the baking powder so invite everybody to my kitchen, Margaret's Kitchen, Comidas de Mi Familia, Tu Sangre Es Tu Sangre, my authentic New Mexico cookbook. Um, you can get it on my website, www.nmcookbookmariabaca.com. You could go to my Amazon shops, my store. Um, you, all you have to do is either put type in Maria Baca or type in Comidas de Mi Familia, Tu Sangre Es Tu Sangre. It'll take you right to it. Or just go to my shops, www.amazon.com backslash shops backslash mariabaca.com. So anyways, go there and check it out and whatnot. I'm so, you know, just, and look, again, I always forget to do a, to do my, <laughs> to do an apron. But anyway, so this is pretty hot because I have it in my, in my hot water kettle here. So you can see how the you know, the shortening has really melted in here. And I just mix it around. So I like to emulsify it. So anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and put half of my water, this is a two cup. So put it in here and start to roll, roll, roll. To just massad. Anyways, we had a wonderful weekend this weekend. Um, we celebrated my son-in-law Ed's birthday, our son-in-law and you know, our, I've always said our daughters have been blessed with amazing husbands and just wonderful children and everything, you know, I feel so blessed, you know, I don't have to, no tengo pena, you know, you don't have to, I don't have to worry about my, my girls and our grandkids because they just have good parents. But anyway, so 
that's pretty much what's been going on. You know, I am. Um, you know, I'm always talking about, you know, my stories of cooking and, and making tortillas, you know. And the person I saw most make tortillas was my dad's mom and my mother. And so my mother no longer makes tortillas. My dad's mom is in heaven making tortillas now. And um, so, you know, I'm the one who makes tortillas for my mom when, whenever I cooked at her house, I would, I'm the one who make the tortillas. So anyway, so there's, there's the full two cups. So anyways, um, and I don't cook over there anymore. So, um, you know, just different reasons. I like cooking here at my house and doing stuff here and, and whatnot. Um, I may have to add just a tad more water and because I didn't uh, fill it up all the way. So I'm gonna do my, a little bit of my hot water. And you can see, you're gonna see how hot it is. And so anyways, um, but I, um, you know, I, um, like I said, I like cooking, I like teaching, I like just all this, you know, I, I just really, really enjoy it. I was telling my granddaughter, you know, um, we were making tortillas the other day, her and I, and I told her, you know, it's okay, your masa is going to seem sticky, but everything is in how you need it. You know, it's all about kneading and stuff. You shouldn't ever really have to add any more, any more flour or anything to your tortillas. See, it's all just coming together. But anyway, so, yeah, I, you know, I was talking to my cousin Connie. She's, they're here from Missouri. And she was telling me that her youngest daughter, Mariah, not Mariah, Megan, watches my, sh my, my YouTube channel and watches my videos. And she told her mom, uh, she has stories, you know, she, she's always talking about different stories of family and how she learned this and how she learned that. And I said, I do, you know, I have, um, I have good memories. I choose to, to think about the good because the good overweighs always the bad. It always overweighs the bad and stuff. And so I, um, you know, I find it to where, what do you call it? Um. I find it warming, you know, I really find it warming. Hold on a second. Usually I bring everything outside and today I got kind of distracted. I have a little bit of flour and the flour is for my, for my board. And that's because usually inside when I'm making my tortillas and stuff inside, my counter's very seasoned already to where, you know, the butcher block. But I'm using my board so I need to make sure that I have flour on here when I start to knead. So I just put a little bit of flour on my board and like I said, it's just for the kneading. So it's just a little bit of flour. And um, I like standing out here. I can watch the horses and the neighbors riding his horses out there. But anyway, so I am, um, my stories, I do, I love to say about stories of growing up and stuff because I had fun, I had a fun grandpa. My grandpa M was really fun, you know, and he was just so loving and kind and caring. I mean, I don't think there was anybody that he did not like, you know, I don't think there was a, a person that didn't become his friend. You know, he was such a, a wonderful man. I was saying when I was pregnant with our oldest Victoria, I was telling my cousin Connie, when I was pregnant with Victoria, um, my grandpa would be the one to take me to my doctor's appointments and stuff because I was young. And, um, 
you know, Jesse was graduating high school at the time, and so, you know, it was important for him to finish school, you know, and, and stuff. And so my grandpa, my mom worked, so my grandpa would be the one to take me to my appointments. And he would sit there and with at the doctor's office and they put a chair right at the, when they would close the door, because, you know, they have to examine you and whatnot. And, you know, and he, you know, he has that respect and stuff. And so, anyway, so he was so funny because um, he would sit there until I had my examination and then the nurse would come out and say, okay, Mr. Martinez, she's ready, but he, she would say it in Spanish. And here, he'd say, okay, when, when do we come back? And he would always, you know, he'd be the one, like I said. So then when I went into labor, because I had the privilege of living by my grandparents, my dad's parents, I had the privilege of living by them all my life. And still, the house still is there. My parents lived right next to my, you know, like two acres away. But, you know, we had the pleasure of being around my dad's parents. And, uh, you know, my grandma was a little riot, you know, she was a riot, let me tell you. That woman, you just don't cross her. She was a trip. But my grandpa had so much, he was the most patient man. Well, anyways, when I, um, find, when I went into labor on that Sunday, I'll never forget, on July 9th, I went in, I was finally in full labor. I had already been in labor since the 7th. I had already started getting contractions and all that. And so it was so funny because Jesse and I had been walking and and whatnot. Look at how nice my 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 dough is. Look, it's not sticky. And so and see, and it seasons. So anyway, so it was so funny because we get to the hospital in Belen. At that time, Belen had a hospital, and it was called Belen General Hospital. And so I'm there. I'm in labor and. You know, my mom's there, and Jesse's there, and stuff. And before you know it, we hear some something commotion at the door. <laughs> and it was my grandpa. And he said, nope, I'm going to stay here. I want to be with my granddaughter. And, you know, he mostly spoke a lot of Spanish. He didn't really speak English, you know. And um, I'm going to stay here until she has that baby. Well, you can't go in there. You cannot go in there, senor, you know. That's okay, I'm gonna sit right here, bring me a chair. But you know, he would say it's Spanish. So he um, he sat there until until I had Mahita. He didn't care, he wanted to see his very first great-grandchild be born, and that he did. You know, and um, he was, he was just, he was just such a, a wonderful grandpa. You know, wonderful grandpa and um and stuff so i think of him and and i miss him every day i miss his wise words you know he you know he always had wise words for you you know and he never he always just everybody hi how are you bless thank you and uh our neighbors are riding horses so anyway so he um you know he was just such a great grandpa you know he just always just you know just supportive and loving and caring and and stuff for all his grandkids you know that man i don't think he had a favorite favoritism in his bones at all you know we were all his his number one grandkids you know each and every one of us from the youngest to the oldest Ugh, well i should say especially my brother joe joe was the firstborn so he had the grandparents all to himself for two years and stuff so he um before i came and so joe was the firstborn and of course oh my god he's a he's a guy it's a boy and my grandpa was so excited you know to have a martinez you know in a uh, martinez to carry on the martinez name so that was really exciting i'm gonna open my water So that was really um, an exciting time. I let my masa sit for just a little bit. If you notice, I just knead it, you know, just massad it, and it's it's nice. I enjoy making tortillas, so I don't find it a challenge or a chore or anything.
But anyway, so, yeah, so he, uh, so my grandpa was just, you know, he was a, he was 100% different. You know, he, he really was. He was just an amazing person. And a lot of times in my life, I try to walk that path that he, that he walked because he, he, he knew how to forgive people. He knew just, he was just a good man, you know, and that's how my dad, my dad was, you know, my dad was just, you know, and I, you guys have heard me say that many times, you know, don't you be the fool, let them be the fool, you know, and I heard something the other day, I'm cleaning my hands right here, I have water in here, I was, uh, sink of water but anyways but trying to get the dry dough off so anyways so it was really like you know I heard this this the other day common sense tells you you know and you know and, and that's true they know that's how my dad was and uh, we went to a funeral on Saturday and they said the one thing they said that their dad would tell them the is common sense tells you you know, you should, you should have common sense. And you know, that's kind of how I feel, you know. So look, I make my bolitas just like this. And um, so I, um, I really try hard to be the better person, to be the bigger person, not so much the better person, but the bigger person, you know. I try really hard to be the bigger person. And um, sometimes that task is not always easy and it isn't you know um you find yourself what i'm doing is i'm going to put my olive oil bottle here because that way it doesn't slide um it doesn't slide that way when i'm making the tortillas but anyways um i really do try i strive hard to be to be that person and more because you know that's that was my dad that was his wish that you know, everybody would get along, everybody would, you know, just everything, you know, I mean, and that's how I try to live my life. But anyways, and so cooking, so cooking for me takes me back to happy days. It takes me back to growing up, and it takes me back to, you know, to grandparents and aunties and uncles. The very first time I watched my Aunt Iris make tortillas, she used what they call masa trigo. And it says that you can find it at the store. It's made by a Quaker. And uh, it's called Masa Trigo. Masa Trigo. Harina para tortillas. And um, so she um, she taught me how to do that. So she says, if you want to, you don't even have to add salt or baking powder. Just water and go. So, and what you can do too, you want to break it down a little bit, she said. All you have to do, ooh, look at nice and hot. Nice and warm. She says, all you have to do is add two cups of masa trigo and two cups of flour. And when you do that, she said, oh, your tortillas will come out just amazing, amazing. And she was right, they did. But at the same time, I like to make my tortillas uh, from scratch. So this way you just don't forget the technique. You don't forget your ingredients. And you always have it there. But if you, you know, if you have to, you do masa trigo, you know, and it's different. It's not, it's, like I said, it's made by Quaker. And um, I'm going to get one more thing to put there. Um, so it's a, it's a nice, easy way to make your tortillas. So anyways, look at my tortillas. Yay. So I always put the wet side down. Let it sit for a second. Turn it over. So um, I was talking to the neighbor this morning, and um, she said, oh, yeah, tortillas, you know, they're so easy to make. And I go, they are. You know, if you stop and think about it, they're, they're simple to make. So if you make 12 bolitas, it should take you less than 15 minutes to get them uh, rolled and cooked. And so it's simple, you know. And so there's nothing like, like homemade tortillas. There really isn't. Oh, yeah, they're cooking nice. I'm going to turn that heat up a little bit. I, don't, I think it's too low. But anyway, so, um, but like I said, you know, cooking takes me back to, you know, exciting days, happy days. I just love it. I, I, I love cooking, you know. 
and um, and stuff. So <laughs> I, I I stretched that one wrong. But anyway, so so when you make them, most of my time my tortillas come out round. Uh, sometimes if I'm not paying attention, I could make it a little different. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what you do. So it's six cups of flour. Uh, one tablespoon of salt or a little less it's up to you but it usually takes that and then you do uh, two and about two cups two and a quarter cups of water and then what you're gonna do oh nice and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a quarter cup or four tablespoons of your your Crisco I used Crisco and then um, and then what you're gonna do is um, Put it in hot water and that's what you do so it's pretty simple you know really simple Simon you know and um, a lot of times I try to make my tortillas a little thicker instead of too thin um, I find that they don't um, if you if you're rolling it and rolling it and rolling it you know sometimes eventually they, they just turn into like crackers when you're cooking them you know it's just different like I say everybody makes tortillas the way they were taught you know um, we make our tortillas like this my mother-in-law makes them like this um, pretty much everybody I know makes them like this and stuff so it's all your nationality of where you um, you grew up and you make tortillas see how neat it's pretty good But anyways, so as I was saying, yeah, cooking takes me back to just a totally different time. It takes me back. It just, it's my solace, you know. I find it to my solace. It's, it's my time for me. It's my time to, you know, praise the Lord for what he's taught me, for how he's guided me. It's just my time, you know. And, um, you know, cooking is a one-person thing. And while well, you need a shoe chef to do the dishes, right? But anyway, <laughs> anyways, but it's um, it's nice and stuff. So I, uh, like I said, you know, this is just how I how I learned how I do it. And if my tortillas don't come out round today, it's okay. They, they all eat them the same. So it's nice. But anyway, so yeah, it's it's just my time, you know and stuff so i hope that my cooking video helps you guys when you're making your tortillas you know i i know i last night there was this guy on one of on a, on a group page and he was saying he's done he's not making tortillas it came out like crackers and this and that and um and i just laughed because you know it takes practice you can't give up the first time but it is it's a you kind of find it to where it's um, you kind of get discouraged that's the best word to say you kind of you get discouraged and so it's just funny but I am um, I've been making tortillas since I was about what eight years old and stuff and um, so you know we've been doing it a long time I've been doing it a long time and I think really I am the one of the only ones in my family that makes tortillas besides my sister-in-law Liola but meaning my sisters I think basically I am the only one that makes tortillas. Our, my daughters, both my daughters and my granddaughter, they both, they all three make tortillas. But for my sisters, I think I'm basically the only one that really makes tortillas anymore and stuff, you know. And so, you know, it's a, sometimes it's a dying tradition, you know. You see a lot of these, you know, they were saying, even like cookbooks, somebody said, well, the thing about cookbooks is that you could just get it off the internet. Yeah, you're right. You could get it off the internet, but you're not going to get you're not going to get that that on hands that you would reading a cookbook and going through a cookbook and seeing the steps that that author or that cook took to, you know, with the recipes and stuff. You know, you're not you're not taking the time to see that. You're not taking the time to know the heritage of how a tortilla is made, where did a tortilla come from, how did this, how did that, you know, so cookbooks, they said, are a dying, are dying, you know, people aren't buying them, but you know what, let me tell you, buy the cookbooks, teach your kids, you know, it doesn't matter, teach your kids 
their heritage teach them whether you're Italian whether you're Japanese or Chinese or Vietnamese or whatever teach your kids you know teach your kids that trade because one day you're gone and they're gonna be like other people hey does anybody remember this or my grandmother did that or my mother used to do this or my mother used to do that people looking so you know what do yourself a favor buy a few of your your heritage cookbooks you know that are from your heritage keep them save them pass them to your children you know when I wrote my cookbook comidas de mi familia tu sangre es tu sangre you know what I heard somebody say oh I could get that off the internet I could do that and get it off the internet yeah you could I'm sure but guess what you won't get the experience you you'll get a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we don't even use that your nationality may not use. Like me, you know, I'm Hispanic, born and raised here in New Mexico. Um, my family's been here since the 1700s. And uh, the thing is, is that we, our family, my family, we don't use cumin in our, in our food at all, you know, especially in our chilies or anything like that. We don't use cumin. And um, so that right there, you know, tells you there's so many different variations, you know, but we don't use cumin. I didn't grow up putting chicken broth uh, to make red chili, to blend red chili. I didn't grow up that way. Mine was clean water, fresh garlic, salt, and oregano. And somebody said, well, I think more oregano is more for, for um, like Italian cooking. It might be, you know, it might be, but that's how I learned. But New Mexico, true New Mexico food doesn't have cumin in it. Well, like I said, it depends how your family taught you. And my family, they didn't use it. You know, they didn't use cumin, you know. And so they didn't use chicken broth or anything like that to, to you know, to blend your chili. They didn't do that. So, and then pozol, we have pozol. We have a dry pozol and we have a frozen pozol that we use that's, that is just blanched and it's not cooked you have to cook it and so it's not the can we didn't grow up with the can so for us it is different you know and stuff so like I said you know the thing about it is is that it um, it's very humid out here because um, it, it has done nothing but rain so anyway so you know so there is a difference as a matter of fact somebody tells me oh you know so and so uh, decided to copy a lot of your recipes out of the book out of your book instead of buying it and I was like oh that's interesting you know buy the book you know buy the book don't do that to people. you know go to the internet and get it get recipes from the internet that's what the internet's for but when somebody takes their time to write a cookbook do this cookbook you know have the common courtesy and respect to um, especially these new cook you know it's a new cookbook you know have that courtesy to buy the cookbook you know or at least wait till the cookbook's 20 years old if you're gonna copy it but anyway so that's kind of what you end up learning and stuff so like I said you know do your family a, a big favor and get them cookbooks get them their heritage cookbooks whether you are Native American whether whatever nationality you are do your family a favor and get them a few of your heritage cookbooks because of the fact is so they can learn exactly how your food is made you know exactly how it's made and I think that that's what's important you know that's important it's like I said like making tortillas it's an art to make tortillas is an art and of course it is because some people make different sh uh, shapes and sizes and you name it they make different shapes and sizes but at the same time you know um, they've learned, you know, that's just, they just can't make him round and it's okay. My mom, her story one day said that she was saying that when she first started learning to make tortillas, her dad, my grandpa T, put a plate and he said, here, now it's round, you know, now it's round. So he put a plate, cut it out, and that's how she made a round tortilla. When she was learning, she told me that story many, many, many years ago. So, you know, everybody has their way of teaching and learning. 
and stuff. And my mom makes very good round tortillas, except she makes 10 and 12 inch tortillas, uh, you know, length. And um, because that's how my dad liked them. You know, he liked big tortillas, you know, because he didn't like a bunch of little ones. He liked to really have the big ones. So anyways, but so that's pretty much, you know, the story of tortillas, you know, and stuff. But, you know, don't forget, you guys, um, pray. Pray every day. Pray every day for, for love and healing and patience. And pray every day for kindness, you know, humility, you know. Don't forget to give yourself to the Lord and, and pray, you know. Love your family. They may not always love you the same way that you love, but it's all good. You know what? Just love each other, you know. That was my dad's thing. Just love each other. Don't fight. Love each other, you know. And so that's what's important. And I think that's a desire for many, many parents, you know, and um, and stuff. I think that's that's a desire for all parents. But anyways, and you know, you want to check out my cookbook, Comidas de Mi Familia, Tu Sangre es Tu Sangre. Um, you could go to my website, www.nmcookbookmariabaca.com to order it. Or you could go to my Amazon shops. And you know what? On my Amazon shop, you're going to find a lot of rare cookbooks in there, rare New Mexico cookbooks and, um, and stuff. So besides my own cookbook. So go to my Amazon shops. Check it out. I have about 60 New Mexico cookbooks. And I have a few others that aren't New Mexico. But um, you'll see. Anyway, so go to my website, check it out, www.amazon.com, um, yeah, backslash shops, backslash mariabaca.com. Check it out, you know, order those cookbooks, get your kids going, you know, so that they could learn what their heritage is all about. No matter what nationality you are, get your kids a cookbook that reminds them of their nationality so that they could learn how to cook their foods you know and it is so so important and stuff you know see how easy that was i i made the masa made my tortillas and everything and it you know tortillas cook different on the comal out here and which i'm good with it i don't have a problem with it you know and um and stuff so oops that's hot look at that so anyways um you know uh, like i said again do yourself a favor get your cookbook you know show your kids how to use a cookbook you know it is so important show your kids how to use a cookbook and um they'll you know what later on in life they will totally appreciate it it was so funny last story while this tortilla is cooking my grandson uh logan he when i came out with my cookbook he says he goes gami can i have one of the cookbooks i go of course you can not a problem and he says well gami i want one that i can write notes in it of everything that I've that I've learned and everything that I'm learning so I could you know carry it with me throughout my life and I go oh my god mijito that is so awesome that he immediately started thinking that way so you know what um, and he's 12 you know and look how he was thinking so do yourself a favor get your get your children into cooking and get them their heritage cook get them a heritage cookbook you know where they're from that is authentic to them, to you, to how you grew up and stuff. You know what? God bless you. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And tune in later on today. I'm going to probably make some other stuff out here and things. So um, tune in and that way we can, um, you can see what else I'm going to be cooking. See my tortillas and stuff. So anyways, God bless you. I love you. Don't forget, Comidas de Mi Familia, Tu Sangre Es Tu Sangre is my authentic New Mexico cookbook. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys on the turnaround. Heck, that's gonna be that's gonna be nice, you know. So um, let's see what happens. How the day comes. You know what? Say a special prayer for my husband. He's not feeling well today and stuff um, and things. So, anyways, God bless you. See you later. I'm gonna download this to my YouTube channel, Margaret's Kitchen, and share, share, share it subscribe to my youtube channel give me a thumbs up please and those of you that have purchased cookbooks on amazon please go in there and you know put your comments um you know one two three four five stars whatever you know but i would appreciate it we'll talk to you soon love you bye